All right, what's up everyone? So today's video is gonna be special. It's gonna be how I chose my very own wedding watch. And so if you follow my Instagram, you might've seen that I got engaged on March 1st, which was so exciting, but almost immediately Corona happened. And so it's been pretty stressful trying to plan and figure out what we're gonna do. But like a lot of guys, um, I wanted to get a watch because even guys who are not into watches, it's something that they, they can look at and just be proud of. And it's sort of, even the fact that it keeps time, it represents maybe a new chapter in your life or taking responsibility over things and becoming an adult. So uh, I just think a watch is really a, a great gift and a great item to get for your wedding. But how do you go about choosing a watch, right? So it's especially for a lot of people who don't know how to choose. I know I've helped uh, a couple of friends, even my photographer, Davey, but uh, I helped him choose his own wedding watch and he was really happy with it. So I, I feel like I have a little experience and I just want to take you through um, what I did because uh, hopefully some of you guys or girls who are watching this, you might be able to use the same tactics to choose um, a watch for your own wedding. So now, before we get into it, the watch that I went with was this Tudor style with a fluted bezel and a 38 millimeter. Everyone has a different price budget, um, so definitely stick to your budget because you can always get something nice regardless of how much you want to spend, there's always something out there. So that's just something to note. Um, you can use these tactics, these tips, and no matter what your budget is. So the first thing that I needed was that um, my, my fiance, she wanted to get me something new. And uh, I know as a, a little bit being in the community and following some Reddit threads, I recommend being on like watch exchange to see what people are, are trading and stuff. But um, of being a little bit in the community, um, being a little bit in the watch community. So I know that a, a lot of people really recommend buying vintage because vintage when you think about the value, um, when you buy it, it's worth a certain amount and it, it only goes up in value or stays relatively stable over time. And back in the day, the vintage watches are really well made and they're still going to last and everything like that. So a lot of people recommend uh, getting vintage. You get a great deal a lot of times and you get something with a lot of heritage. Um, but for me, I know my fiance wanted to get me something new and I totally agree with that. And I think it's really important, especially for something uh, like a wedding watch, you want it to be yours. You know what I mean? And I want it to embody and encompass the day itself and something that I can wear on that day and know that um, it's, it's mine, like I made it my own kind of thing. So that was the first thing is, is I, although buying vintage is, is awesome and it's a great hobby, I think in this case, definitely buy new, at least for me, that was what I thought. The second thing was um, I needed something that was dressy because I'm gonna be wearing this with a suit or a tux um, and I need something that's gonna be elegant, not too uh, sporty. So that means like, you know, I, I don't really want like loud numbers or indices. Um, I want something that's like pretty low key and elegant. Um, and also something to keep in mind with that is that think about what kind of bracelet you want, um, whether a strap or a bracelet. So for me, I know my fiance wanted to get me a bracelet and I also agree with that. I think a bracelet has, has this like sturdiness to it to it, and this like elegance to it. Um, but some guys like getting leather, so that's just something to think about. But I always like to tell people when they're shopping for watches, it's really easy to swap out a strap or a band. Uh, you can always do that, it's really simple. You can always go buy aftermarket straps or metal bracelets that are really high quality. So really the main thing to focus on is definitely the case itself. Um, and just keep that in mind, you can always change out the straps or bands. So now the third thing is that although I want it to be classy and dressy, I still want it to be distinctive. So I don't want to get something that's like really, really simple and basic. I still wanted something that has like a little bit of a flair to it. Cause I, I even know from talking to my friends who are getting married, they want something that's like exciting. It's something that's like very special looking at least. So when you look at it, it really catches your eye. So it's a little bit hard to balance. Cause I know I said, I want something that's dressy and like a little bit, uh, you know, that's elegant, but something that's also distinctive. And that's uh, sometimes very hard to find honestly. So, but that was, you know, what I was trying to do not something that's too loud, but still something that catches your eye. Now, another thing I wanted to keep in mind was that um, I know a lot of people have great stories about how they received like a watch from let's say their grandfather or father. And I think that's really amazing. I think that's one of the greatest things about watch collecting is that if you have a great watch that's well built, you can really pass it down from generation to generation. And I was really thinking like, although um, I'm not gonna be, I'm not really in a huge uh, price market. I can't spend that much money and get something that's really crazy. But I was thinking that I want something that like is gonna be able to be passed down from generation to generation almost. And I, I thought like, I want something that's gonna be stylish for a long period of time, that's high quality. Um, but I don't know, just for me, think about something that I could be, that I could possibly pass down. Um, that mindset, kind of something that was that was just on my mind as I was trying to choose a watch. And I think uh, something that's really good to keep in mind with that is that you shouldn't go for something that's like too trendy. So I, for me, it's like, not, don't go for loud, loud colors, maybe something that go, that's very versatile, um, that you could wear, you could wear time and time again without getting tired of, that kind of thing. Um, and for me, I always recommend like, honestly, not going for, like, don't get a green dial watch or something like that. Um, I recommend also 
not to get a black dial, just in general, that's my own personal taste, because I think black dials are, are hard to dress up. Um, sorry, they're, they're easy to dress up. <laughs> to me, black, I can't really wear it with anything other than black, in my opinion. So that's like something I want to stay away from because like that the only time I could wear it, let's say, is getting dressed up and I want something that I could be, that I could wear in a lot of different situations and almost like be part of my identity. Like I've seen John Mayer like was talking about how he like has this IWC big pilot and like that's his watch. Like to him that encompasses his identity. And so I kind of wanted to go for something like that where it's something that like I'm so proud of and I just, I love to wear it and I want to wear it as much as possible almost like. So it's not something that I want to keep on a shelf and only wear for like super dressy occasions. It's something that like I really do want to get a lot of use out of. So now the next tip is really important, especially for like beginner watch guys. Um, and that also, again, it, everything kind of goes hand in hand here. It's And that, that has to do with case size. So a lot of guys don't realize, and I know I made this mistake when I was buying my first automatic watch, they don't really realize that size matters a lot when it comes to watches. And um, people don't even measure their wrists or anything like that. But think about like how skinny you are and how big your wrist is because um, you can look at uh, the watch of a case. Usually every website you're looking at will show the measurements of the case. And to me, if anything over 40 millimeters is too big for my wrist. I have a 6 and 7, uh, 6.75 inch wrist. And so for me, anything over 40 millimeters, I know it's like a little bit too big for me. Um, and I know, especially for a, a dress watch, I want it to be a little bit on the smaller side that slides under a shirt cuff and not something I'm going to be wearing sporty outside uh, with a t-shirt or anything like that. So I wanted something that's going to be small and elegant and going to fit under a, uh, a shirt sleeve specifically. And of course, like, it's my wedding, so I'm going to be wearing either a suit or a tux. I still haven't decided, <laughs> but uh, it's, it's something that I have. I'm, I'm, it's, it's literally made this. I'm getting this watch for my wedding, for that occasion. So um, it has to obviously fit under, you know, a shirt sleeve. So I wanted something that was basically between 34 and 38 millimeters. To me, that was the sweet spot. I remember looking at watches that were 38 and a half millimeters, and to me, it was almost like, even though I like those watches a lot, I kind of shot away because I was like, it's above my 38 millimeter thing. And I know that I really like 38 millimeter watches. I've had a few. Um, so that to me was like the sweet spot. And the last thing that I wanted to point out is really think about price and value. And to me, it was getting a gift from my fiance. So I really had to think about, listen, I'm getting a gift from someone. I can't really look above what she's telling me the price range is. Um, and even when I was looking on websites, like I sorted by, by price because I didn't want to see things that I wasn't going to be able to get. And I think be courteous, especially if you're getting a gift, be courteous to what that, that budget is. Um, and hand in hand with that was that um, I wanted something that was kind of going to keep its value. I know some watches, and this is really a testament to brand, um, some brands hold their value a lot better than other brands. And it's kind of like cars, like the second you drive off the lot, uh, a lot of them are, are not worth as much, whereas some of them kind of do hold their value or are in high demand a lot more. It's a good way to think about making sure you've got something that uh, that's really uh, going to hold its value. And I think especially in watch collecting, um, you know, since this is kind of going to be for a lot of guys an entry, a gateway into watch collecting, um, think about value and, and how much a watch is going to, is going to be worth over time. So without further ado, the watch that I went with was this Tudor style with the fluted bezel and a 38 millimeter. So the reason I'm so excited about this one is because Tudor is owned by Rolex. And although we weren't in the price range in the budget to get a Rolex, they're very expensive. Um, this is, Tudor was founded by Rolex to offer basically for, affordable versions of Rolexes for guys who can't afford Rolexes since they're very expensive. So to me, it was a, it was really a perfect choice. Um, to me, I wanted something that's really luxurious that, that kind of gets me into that luxury watch space without really spending a fortune. And um, this one to me is just really p perfect. It fits, it, it's, it hits all the marks for me. Uh, like I said, it's 38 millimeters. I got it on a bracelet, which is something that I wanted. I get the precision of the watchmaking that Rolex is, is known for. These are made on the same machines as Rolex, made out of the same uh, steel standards as the Rolex uh, watches are. The only difference for those nerds out there is that the, the movement inside that keeps the watch ticking um, is not made by Rolex. It's actually an ETA, which is still a high quality Swiss movement, but that uh, that is what keeps the price down. Something else about the Tudor style is that it has this fluted bezel. Hopefully you guys can see that. Um, and it shimmers and sparkles without being too loud. So it's something that when you look at it, it really does kind of catch your eye, uh, especially in different lightings. And the dial is beautiful. It's simple. I just have like, there's just stainless steel markers um, that are like arrows almost that also sparkle, but uh, nothing too loud, nothing too crazy. There's no diamonds on there or anything like that. Now for this watch specifically, if you go on the, on the website, it's kind of a new model. I think it came out to, in like 2018 and they have a bunch of different color combinations. You can really choose anything you want. And so this one specifically, I wanted in a 38 millimeter, like I said, and they have it in a 34 and a 26 or, or 28 and a 41. 
And so I was really able to, to, to get the exact one I wanted. I also chose something with a blue dial because to me, I just love blue dials. To me, uh, having a dark dial really does wear better. And I think um, to me, it's, I don't know, to me, it's just a little bit more distinctive than having something that's like a silver or black uh, dial. And this one's just beautifully, beautifully done. I think it's so crisp and, and, and has this like metallic finish in, in the sunlight. So it really does like play with the light, it has this like sunburst effect. Really, really beautiful. Um, it's got a sign crown, a screw down crown, and the case itself, you can almost cut yourself. It's so sharp, the finishing is so sharp. And listen, I don't get too too into like uh, the details because honestly, I think you're still paying for the brand at the end of the day when it comes to buying this uh, Tudor watch. But the, when you look at the details, you could see that's really just, it's a real luxury piece. It's, so it's been like a week since I got the watch. My, my wedding's coming up in August. So I'm, I'm just getting to wear it a little bit in the house. And it, I'm telling you, it just it's, it feels so good on the wrist. It, it just feels part of me. It's, I'm telling you, it actually got me really excited about my wedding. And I really appreciate my fiance. So thank you very much for, for getting it for me. Because uh, to me, it's just a great way to start a, a marriage, a relationship, um, is to get something like this where you can kind of mark the day and get something that's gonna stand the test of time. It's something you're gonna be proud of, um, hopefully for the rest of our lives together. So that's really cool. And so I definitely recommend try, uh, checking out this watch. I think it's really great. And so, yeah, I, I, again, I think that it's such a great way to um, kind of encompass the day for anything special. Watches are so meaningful and something most guys do wear all the time. So hopefully this list of tips was really helpful to you guys. Let me know if you have any watches um, that you got for a special occasion or a wedding below. Anything that you guys recommend that I should check out or other people should check out would be really appreciated in the, in the comments. Um, I would say that I also checked out, so Aris was one of the other brands I was really looking into, and also Longines in that price range, uh, under $2,000 for something. So let me know what other brands you guys recommend in the comments below. As always, like and subscribe. Check me out on Instagram too, and I'll see you guys in the next one.